you know, what we've been seeing over the last few years, and I've been writing and speaking about this, is the rise of uh, anti-science movements uh, in the United States, globally as well, but uh, particularly strong now in the U.S. And it really started with the anti-vaccine movement uh, that really gained speed in 2015. Uh, and under the banner of what some call health freedom or medical freedom, this phony concept about denying children access to life-saving vaccines just because parents are, are being inundated with misinformation on social media uh, and the internet. And um, uh, this has led, led to declines in vaccine coverage to the point where I was predicting we would start seeing measles uh, epidemics in the U.S. And I wrote a, an article in the New York Times in 2017 called How the Anti-Vaxxers Are Winning predicting that things are reached a point where, where even though we eliminated measles in 2000, we'll soon start seeing measles epidemics. And then I, uh, even though we're not funded to do this, I'm a laboratory investigator developing vaccines for neglected tropical diseases and now also COVID-19. We, together with a medical student, Jackie Olive and uh, a couple of faculty members we put together we wrote to all the state health departments to get information on where kids weren't getting their vaccines for non-medical reasons. And uh, we identified about uh, 15 hotspots in the country where we think kid, where we might start seeing measles because so many kids were being denied access to vaccines. And sure enough, we there it was in 2019. We had a number of measles outbreaks across the country, landing a lot of kids in the intensive care unit. It was all predicted and predictable. And now what's happened is uh, these, these same anti-vaccine groups, and a lot of them come out of the far political right, the Tea Party, and they're getting support from Tea Party donors, uh, again, under this fake concept of health freedom or medical freedom, have now tacked onto that uh, campaigns against masks and, and contact tracing and social distancing to the point now where we have a devastating uh, COVID-19 epidemic across the across America that's led to 160,000 deaths so far. The deaths are still climbing, and so the question is: how, Why is it that anti -vac anti science movements, beginning with the anti vaccine movement, are allowed to flourish? Because that's what's happened. The anti vaccine movements become a full fledged anti science movement, and and my premise is that one of the reasons is that. As scientists, we're too invisible. We we are too focused on our grants and papers and writing and speaking for each other that we've lost our ability or even interest in engaging uh, the public. And so I wrote a paper that came out earlier this year called uh, Combating Anti-Science Movements in the 2020s. And it basically comes down to saying that we need to fix this. We need to find a way to get scientists more involved in speaking to the public, feeling comfortable talking to the public. Uh, and and that, that would include creating programs uh, for doctoral education around public communication and scientific communication and postdoctoral programs as well. And, and it's really interesting, the response to that. So it came out in Plus Biology, and I forget the exact title, something like combating anti-science movements in the 2020s. The young people are all in. I mean, you talk to young scientists, they'll say, hey, Dr. Otez, let's, let's do it. And the problem is we don't, we don't really have the ecosystem to create that yet. There's still, it's still being blocked by, unfortunately, scientists of my generation who are trained with the idea that you're not supposed to engage the public or, or talk to journalists. That's seen as a form of self-promotion or grandstanding. And and I say those are old ideas that were created before something called the internet came along, before something called social media came along. And now it's imperative that we have scientists who the public can recognize and feel comfortable hearing from. That's the only way at this point to combat these uh, anti-science groups.